everyone, and welcome back to Speedbird 676. I hope everyone's doing well on the ground and also in the air. Now, before I put out an apology for my recent absence, let's just get down to the nitty-gritty and get into what recently just transpired, which was the accident involving an Ethiopian Airlines 737 MAX 8. Ethiopian Airlines ET Flight 302 was a scheduled passenger flight from Addis Ababa Bole International Airport in Ethiopia to Joma Kenyatta International Airport in Nairobi, Kenya. Sadly, after takeoff on March 10, 2019, the Boeing 737 MAX 8 crashed near the town of Bishoftu, killing all 157 passengers on board, with eight crew members and 149 passengers to be exact. The cause of the accident is currently unknown and under investigation from various sources. This is Ethiopian Airlines' second fatal accident in just nearly a decade, with Flight 409 in January in 2010. The registration of the aircraft involved in ET-302 was ET-AVJ. The aircraft was first flown in October 2018 with a delivery date of November 15, 2018, making it around four months at the time of the accident. Also something noteworthy about this same registration, ET-AVJ made its first maiden flight on the 30th of October, a day after the Lion Air 610 incident. Now with all that said, with everything that I've said so far, I'm going to have one of my aviation pals talk to you guys about everything that I just talked about just now. Hey everyone, it's great to be on the channel here. Uh, I'll try to give as much input as I can to whatever questions that uh, Mr. Alomar here has. So, so with that, thank you for that great introduction. What do you feel about this entire situation regarding both Lion Air and with the recent incident of ET-302? For me, what I think about both incidents, I think it's very peculiar that this plane went down and some of the speculations, it's not really what happened, but some of the speculations that are there regarding this MCAS system, again, having maybe the same effect that it had on Lion Air, I think that it's very close of an accident that happened together. And I'm actually kind of happy that Bo that Boeing and the rest of the FAA and everything for America, they grounded these aircraft so that they can really get through and see if it was really MCAS again, maybe if it was pilot error, technician error, to see what really happened so they can get a real nitty-gritty investigation going. Now, thanks for that chime. Now, he did mention MCAS. Now, MCAS stands for Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, which was specifically developed for the 737 MAX program, which prevents stalls in flat retraction, low speed, and nose up in flight. Now, the MCAS uses airspeed and other sensor data to compute when a dangerous condition has developed and then trims the aircraft nose down, which is basically... Which is basically pretty much what happened in both scenarios. scenarios now, yes. As far as Lion Air is concerned, there is higher speculation to that for MCAS, but as far as ET-302, it is still too early to deem that, is the, that it is the MCAS fault for this uh, accident that happened. And the MCAS is basically located right next to the pitot tube, so it generally looks like a pitot tube, but the only thing is is that it kind of curves upward and downward, so it's like a little mini flap on the side of the nose. It, it's kind of it's like, if you think about it, it's kind of like a windsock. So it goes in the direction of the wind, but in this case, the way it goes is that once the wind is passing through it, it has to level off. So it levels off, so if the plane is climbing, this will go sort of perpendicular to it, I guess you want to say, of its climb. So it'll just be flat while the plane is still in the climb position. And when that is activated, then it tells the rear vertical stabilizers to, okay, we're nose up too high. We need to go down a little bit. But in this case for Lion Air, uh, it, well, you know what happened. And... Here's the other thing. The system is deactivated when the pilot trims the aircraft using the switch on the yoke, which in this case, are we really trying to make it seem like it's a fighter jet at that point? Because if you really think about it, yeah, I know there's little switches on the yoke itself, but is this really a system that we generally need on an aircraft? I mean, in, in terms in terms of this aspect, like, I could see where MCAS can be useful. I can. Yeah, it's a but, good redundancy. But at the same time, it's like, okay, some of, some of these pilots, no matter how many hours they have on a certain aircraft, the 8 Max is sort of relatively new for most pilots. Yes. And they don't 
they might not know the systems as well, and they probably don't know that the switch is there, located on the yoke, to turn this MCAS system off. No, they won't. They generally won't. And the other thing that is really surprising about the 737 is the 737, the hamster pod, the famous hamster pod engines on the CFM-56Bs, B for Boeing, A for Airbus, because they also use the CFM-56. But generally, they're closer to the fuselage like a traditional jet. But in this case, it's pushed out a little bit further towards the middle of the wing. So wouldn't that cause some sort of drag in this case, since the engines are also bigger? It, in, a, in a certain aspect, no. It probably wouldn't, because obviously the engine is made to be aerodynamic. True. One part is made to take the air in, and the rest the air is supposed to go around it. So in terms of it being closer to the middle of the wing, I don't see it having a problem with drag or none of that. What I do see it having a problem with is more of a weight and balance issue, mm-hmm. like fuel in the wings, your baggage, your this, your that, how everything is really situated in the plane. And I mean, these CFMs on the, on the new Max are a little bit bigger than the CFMBs. So, I mean, there's all of that to take into consideration, too. So getting back to ET-302 real quick, the flight took off at 8.38 p.m. local time with 149 passengers on board with eight crew members totaling up to 157. One minute into the flight, the pilot reported flight control problem but decided to continue with the flight. Three minutes into the flight, the aircraft accelerated beyond its safety limits and the pilot requested permission to return back to the airport. Now real quick on that, the captain said that the plane accelerated beyond its limits. However, what happened with Lion Air was that people are saying that the, close to the same thing happened, um, but it was a reported, not actual airspeed. It was a reported airspeed that it went faster than it was supposed to go, when in reality it probably was going too slow as to why MCAS kicked in. And it's funny that you mention it because... The aircraft then disappeared from the radar screens and crashed at around 8.44, six minutes after takeoff. It was reaching an altitude of around 9,000 feet MSL. So with that being said, the way how it just went straight down, it kind of reminds me of um, that DC-10 crash that happened over France, even though that was for a different, a separate situation. I believe it was for the uh, one of the cargo hold doors because the DC-10 at that time had a real bad cargo do- door hold um, situation. But it has gotten to the point where the 737 MAX 8, or rather the MAX program, has become, sorry to say, but the DC-10 of its time because... Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call I wouldn't, it the DC-10. I mean, I'm calling it the DC-10 of its time due to the fact that now it's the entire fleet's grounded. So it brings me to this question. Do you believe that it's too early to speculate blaming it on MCAS or, you know, blaming it on the pilot? What do you think? I think, well, based based on the way things are going, a lot of people are saying, oh, this is an MCAS issue. This is an MCAS issue, MCAS, blah, 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 blah. And some people are really, really strong or strongly believe that, it, one, it is way too early to ground this aircraft. And two, a lot of people are making a lot of claims when it just shouldn't be. Now, I get that aspect. I really, really do. I get that aspect. I agree. It may be too early to ground the aircraft, but at the same time, you have to think about it in this perspective. About around, maybe a little bit higher, but around 350 people are dead because of both of these crashes. Now, whether ET-302 is also because of MCAS, we don't know that as far as any type of thing is concerned for an investigation. However, However, I do feel that it was a good idea to ground the max 8 fleet now they also grounded the max 9 fleet uh i haven't seen anything wrong with the max 9 i haven't heard any news about the max 9 as far as i'm concerned the max 9 is performing the way it's supposed to perform and grounding the max 9 yes i could see that was totally uncalled for that never that came out of the blue uh i get it people might be angry about that but as far as the max 8 is concerned think about it this way again 350 people are dead because of this because of both aircraft now again it's not because of mcas we don't know that yet but if it really wasn't because of that then obviously the planes will go back into service but then again think about it you do not want another recreation of what happened so many years ago with how many dc-10s it took and how many crashes it took before they grounded the fleet at least 
if it was not MCAS fault this time, at least the aircraft is grounded for, let's say, a month, and it'll go right back into service. There's nothing to be angry about. Yeah, because Boeing was having um, these little subtle messages stating that, hey, we have seen some issues with MCAS even during flight testing back when they were trying to get the MAX program certified so that way it can have its airworthy certificate. And and if you want, uh, I'm sure Malik will put a link to where you can find that information yourself just so you know he's not saying this, you know. Yeah, just to say it, yeah. But um, you did mention, the D- we both mentioned the DC-10. I actually brought it up. But you just said all these different accidents that happened before they grounded the entire fleet. Now, the same thing could be said, even though there weren't any fatalities with this specific aircraft, but the same thing could be said with the Boeing 787 program. That is... It's different. It's it's completely different, different but... There was no fatalities, yeah, least, yeah. there was no problem. It just had a lot of battery issues, issues but yeah. again, that was because of a rushed aircraft. In this case, I also think the whole MAX program is a rushed set of aircraft. I mean, and I'm going to make another video regarding everything being rushed nowadays in aviation because look at what happened with the Trent 1000 engines with the 787. First, they were saying that there was going to be a recall with the Trent 1000 A package, then the B package. Then Rolls-Royce came out with a statement saying, all right, all the packages have a problem. So now we're just going to reimburse the airlines and basically fix the entire fleet of 787s that are flying in the air with Trent 1000 engines. But But that's for a total different video. (laughs) That's for a totally different video. But with that being said, thank you so much for chiming in. But I feel that this is a video that obviously it's going to become a series because we have to know exactly what's going on. So I will follow up with you guys based on this situation. But please, by all means, comment down below. Tell us how you feel about the entire situation. Do you feel that, you know, any of our opinions were, you know, just wrong? Or do you feel that any of our opinions were right? Just, again, please leave a comment down below. Let's have a real Real conversation. you know, uh, airline, aviation aviation industry, community community, chat kind of thing going on. Let's have that. Because it's really hard to find a lot of people who are aviation enthusiasts nowadays. And the more the merrier. Let's just let's have a little talk going. Like Plus, some of you might think yeah. that the seven three is should not be grounded, and some of you do think the seven three should be grounded. Let's hear what you got to say. Plus, I'm always well. We're always willing to learn more about what's going on oh, in the aviation community, whether it be fleet changes or whatever. But in this case, this is a total maintenance issue. So. Well, well, we well, don't know well, that we, yet. Yeah, we don't know let, that let, yet. Let but the investigation just, go through, yes. and then we'll find out. And plus, it is a great way to you know learn about investigations and stuff as well. Yeah. So with that being said, thanks for tuning in to Speedbird 676. It basically became a podcast at this point. But thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys later. Have a safe flight.